This is D13, and welcome aboard. So in this series, we're going to be looking at a space station inspired by science fiction novels, movies, uh, TV shows, what have you. I'm going to be building the base initially in this first video, but I'm going to show you here a little bit of, of the buildings that I've started constructing inside. This uh, series is intended to run until I complete the interior of the base, and I'm also considering doing a few other things outside the base. Now, if you've got any ideas, cool ideas, what could be built in this base, please uh, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to know what you'd like to see in here. The uh, building here on the right, the Stargazer Hotel, that was uh, suggested, the name was suggested by uh, folks over on the City Skylines Facebook page. So I'm doing a little bit of work with green screen uh, so that um, when we do the cinematics and things like that or long far shots, you'll see star a star field in, uh, in the background. So it looks like the city is actually a base floating in space. So terraforming, I took a basic map from the game and I just flattened it. Got rid of all the water sources currently on the map and just simply flat. I'll be using some of the inland water, uh, you know, assets. Here I'm using a roundabout builder to mark off the, the base. And I'm using a little trick where you copy paste using move it, the exterior connections from the map. And I moved them to the center of the base here so that I could uh, test getting the traffic to be moving around in here. And you can see there's a success. So road structure. So these are roads. And it's how I intend to move the people around the base uh, in a hidden fit fashion. The These little roads around the edges will be inside of a, the outside edges of the base. They'll be mostly used for, uh, you know, people getting in and out of the areas of the base. But there will be a lot of monorails and things like that built in the upcoming episodes. So there you saw I connected. I created um, a hex shape, basically, so I could figure out where the three spindles would go evenly spaced. And I've done some round areas here. This is I'm I'm not sure exactly what's going to go in the rounded areas. Uh, they might be mostly uh, support areas. But again, I'd like to know what you'd like to see in the base. So here's the green screen. So there's a green screen asset. I took it and I made it super huge, just massive, uh, using procedural objects. And we're putting it in here so that when I'm you know circling around the base you'll have a star field all the way around. And then I put this one at the bottom and made it, again, really big. Now, it's really hard to get a hold of when it's that big because it's hard to see the little plus from the procedural objects. All right, so the arches. Like, I love this arch asset. So I thought this would be a really cool way to make like a glass dome or glass archway over the top of the area I'm going to be building the city in. And I got a hold of these this little pipe piece and I put it in here and colored it gray as a you know just sort of a test of what the outside edge of the base will look like. Eventually I'm gonna go back and replace that. But here I'm still working on this is a tiny glass, really tiny glass tube that was created for City Walk City Walls Mars project, part of his hyperloop. Once I get one piece built here, I'm going to copy it over and over um, and you know, go all the way around the base. That little round tube you see at the very top was originally, I was thinking I'd be hanging some sort of a high-speed rail from that, but I decided to remove that for now. So here I'm copying over a large section. 
Now with the grouping function that's built into uh, the uh, procedural objects mod, I was able to just group these into big chunks. And then I can turn on and off separate sections of it. So this is the spindles. This is like where the traffic will go from the intersection, you know, in the middle to the outer ring. And I, I got this pipe and I made it really big and uh, stretched it out and put it in here. A lot of this, when I was doing here, was uh, really just experimenting. Uh, there's well over 100 hours of video uh, recorded for over well, a four month span of me just building the base out. And I've edited all of that down to around 25 minutes or so so that you can uh, get an idea of how this was constructed. In case you want to do something similar in, in one of your projects uh, or one of your, one of your cities. Here we go, copying over and over again. So you're going to notice that the roads in the middle change quite a bit over time. I did quite a bit of work to try to keep the traffic flowing really well, but I don't really show a lot of traffic manipulation uh, in videos. So here's now, here now we're making the uh, walls on the interior of the section where I'll be building. It is kind of, kind of you know, touchy trying to get these perfectly lined up. I did, I actually edited out most of the fine tuning that I do after I came in and, and put in those mass copy pastes. So here I put in some temporary big round areas and was removing the uh, arches there. And I thought I'd add these cool buildings here. I made them really big, they're from Quad. And I thought they looked really cool sticking up here. So here I took one of those arches and I just made it like a big flat thing that I could use. I called it an end cap. Uh, it goes right on the end of these big glass arch areas. Here we are. This is what it looks like at this moment in time. So then I decided I had to really make the sides look good. You'll see a lot of buildings inside here. I was already throwing some buildings down, checking what might look good in here, how big they could be. So I found this thing from Quad, and it's like a giant barricade wall. And I made it wider and took off some of the edges here because I just love the texture on it. it it's uh, nice to have this really beautiful texture on here rather than that just gray repeating piece underneath. So after I get this all finished, I actually went back and got rid of the initial gray area that I built here. Uh, and some of these have got some cool patterns on them or cool things sticking out of them. So I, I did those every fourth, I believe. So that way you, you get some sort of interest in, in what this looks like. Then it's a matter of copying it over and sort of tweaking it a little bit and turning them a little bit because the, um, you know, the curve is slightly different the closer you get to the center of the cir center circles, you know, the, you know. So you have to do a little bit of work to, to try to get those lined up right. So there's a transition wall, also known as a bulkhead, I, I would say. So in case something would happen and an area needed to be sealed off, this is already sort of sealed off from each other. Each area could be differently climate controlled. So here I, I had these roads put in and these are like a solar road. So they actually provide power. So I, and I just think they're so cool. So I have like a highway that's raised and then there's another highway down below hidden underneath. Um, and they're separated so that people aren't going to be on the upper or lower areas. You're either on the upper area or on the lower area and they don't really mix. There's not a lot of good ways to get to those areas back and forth. So it causes a lot of, you know, whenever you do a connection between the upper and lower area, this will cause a lot of people to move between the two. So here I was just making this cover out of these really cool assets. Again, I believe these are city walk, city wall assets uh, from, from his Mars series. And you can see there's like a little, little, um, you know, grid there that you can see through 
So you'll actually see uh, cars going through there. And if there's like a police car going through there, it'll be flashing lights. Here's more of the exterior detailing. I, I built this little gun platform uh, and put this along here all the way around. And I started working on these flat platforms all the way around the outer edge. Um, I thought I love these are the quad, uh, more of the quad rider uh, you know, vehicles. There's like a little vehicle pack on the uh, workshop and I thought I'd throw those in there and just so for, you know, sizing purposes to see how they would fit here and decided I really like this. So, you know, like there would probably be for defense purposes against aliens or something. There'd be, you know, fighters on board, stuff like that. Okay, here we are back with doing a little more of the side work. I was going around these, what I call rounds, the round areas on these, uh, the three, three different round areas. You'll see some letters inside here and numbers. This is like, this is round number one. So if I, you know, this way I can keep track um, on a spreadsheet of what I'm doing and where. I also broke apart the, each of these um, pieces into sectors. So you have, you know, like segment A, segment B, segment C, and then there's one through eight are the sectors. It helps me to, to name the, the layers. And this way I can, uh, I can just know wh what I'm, what is where in the base. <laughs> Here you can actually see the monorail already built in there. You'll be seeing the monorail being constructed in, I believe, the next episode. I'm using a lot of those block um, services uh, assets instead of real buildings down in there. So I'm just copying this, this platform and I, it's all one group in I believe it's all one group right now in uh, procedural objects, so I can copy it over and move the whole thing all at once. A little bit of lining up going on here. I left this lining in, lining up in here so you could see all of the tweaking that had to be done to get this to a, a really, you know, really clean state. Now I'm copying over a bunch of the, uh, you know, the fighter bays. All right, so I'm just adding some buildings here and uh, I'm just doing one segment of this and then I'll be copying and pasting this over. Um, wasn't sure exactly what I was building here. There's just some access buildings for the exterior. Uh, this is, this looks really cool. It's uh, I, I just thought this would be some sort of a uh, deep space array or, or something. There's some tiny little bulkhead doors. These look, I like these quite a bit. So now I thought, wow, I need pipes and all kinds of crazy stuff on the sides of this base. It's got to, it's got to look really cool. You know, like when you're watching Star Wars or something and you see like the giant Star Destroyers, it looks like somebody took all the plastic sprues from a model kit and just glued them to the outside of it. That's kind of what I wanted the outside of this to look like. So I found this uh, building. I can't remember what it is. It's a plastics building or something like that, oil processing. And PO'd it, stuck it in here, and then here's where I'm reversing it using the procedural objects to, so I have a, a mirrored version of it. And this way, and it also adds a tiny bit of color to the outside of the base, because if you had to look at gray on gray on a field of gray, like you, you'd probably not want to keep working on a build like this or even watching it. So there will be some, I like, bright primary colors so the a lot of the color that i add is going to be very you know it's not going to be realistic looking it's going to be brighter you know so there i found another oil building i really liked and here's like a storage oil storage tanks and it's it's weird when you when they're flat on the ground you, you know they're oil storage tanks but boy you turn them sideways and you stick them up on the side of this thing and they just look really cool Now I'm going to copy these over and over down the down just this one side. Eventually, I'll copy the entirety of all of these little details and paste them on the other th other two uh, segments. Oh, here this is a really cool little building from Quad, and I thought, you know, I don't even know what the building really is. I think it's a power plant or something, 
But I decided I, I really wanted to have um, something that was like torpedo tubes, you know, photon torpedoes or quantum torpedoes or whatever, right, out of any of the sci-fi series. So I stuck that in there. Then this is this is a really cool sci-fi asset that I, I found on the on the workshop, and I so now I wanted to have some guns that I could move around and put little guns all over the place. So I took that one big asset and I got rid of everything but the gun. So now I can move the I can put the gun here, and if I need to put it in other places, I can. This building was a City Walk City Wall when he did a um, how to create assets series for. Um, you know, for city skylines. And I loved that building so much. And I, so I, I put it in there and I put a little, you know, radar dish on top of it. There we go. Just copying over a lot of these little segments. Um, so we have a nice repeating, repeating pattern of those. Oh, here we go. Look at this. This is, I didn't know what to do. I covered these, uh, the spindles, and then I wasn't sure what to do to, to sort of sp spice them up a little bit. I thought, wow, maybe some solar panels would look really cool along here and give it some color. And I got, I got a hold of this like solar farm and PO'd it and did a little work to put it in there and flip it upside down and put it along these spindles. And I really love how this turned out. They are non-functional. I mean, they don't they don't create electricity or anything. But you know, that I'm using a couple of mods that you know make it so you don't have to connect your electricity everywhere. Once you've got some electricity in the tent, it's just everywhere. And then I am also using a, one with water that doesn't require me to put in any water pipes. All you have to do is put in the the uh, facilities and one little piece of pipe, and the whole thing gets uh, connected. So here I replaced those flat rounds that I had in here with a little bit taller ones. This is one of these round buildings that I sort of pulled the, the middle top area together and it just looks amazing. I think if you watch Acurus do um, his Aurelia series, he uses that a lot as a way to sort of shape his roads around it, you know, in like clover leaves and stuff. And he's used this building multiple times and that's where I first saw the building. So here I, I thought, you know, this little area, I put a little spinning radar there. And I have a little astronaut guy walking out here. And I thought, well, maybe he should be connected with a little cord so he doesn't fly off into space. Um, so I put a, I got this little wire that actually kind of waves back and forth. And I just shrunk it down so I could fit it there. So the command tower. So this asset is really cool. It's like a port that's also a space elevator. I PO'd this thing and stuck it right on top of this and then got some of my round buildings and so this is going to be my command structure. This is going to be, you know, where everything that, you know, where the command for the base would be and, you know, just, just like a giant office tower. So I got these in here and then I decided I needed these to be rotating. So I used the procedural objects module for rotation. And I put that on each of these and I have them each, every other one is rotating in a different direction. So I also added these little center grace areas in the middle. So it looks like it's rotating around those rather than oddly around those six little, you know, little tower areas in, in there. This is just a big round uh, you know, procedural object thing. And here's what it looks like. Uh, Sort of, at this point, not quite fully finished yet. So then I got these little tiny tanks, these little propane tanks. Made them huge. And they just really look nice. I mean, they're, they're shine, they have a little bit of shine to them. They have, they're the, you know, I was able to get them the right, you know, a nice color so that they match the sides of the base. And there are other fuel tanks or something, right? They're fuel or water or you know, maybe oxygen. I'm not sure exactly what would be in these tanks, but, um, you know, if anybody has any idea of what would be possibly stored outside like this in these tanks, you know, let me know. And you know, we'll officially make that what's, what's in here. I mean, maybe it's, uh, maybe there's wine in there or, you know, for Biffa, maybe there's some tea, giant tea storage, maybe. 
So I'm just copying these over because I really th I like the look of them and it gives the outside of the base a really cool, cool interesting feel to it overall. And here I'm moving some of these gun emplacements it's more towards the interior, so I'm not sure how realistic something like that would be to have them here. I mean, in a future episode, I'm really considering... I want to do some one-off stuff, like uh, once the base is at a really good place, I could do like an alien invasion and have some of the areas destroyed and save that as a separate map and then, you know, be able to show off what would happen during an alien invasion. So here I thought, I, I'm having trouble <laughs> with the green screen and these glass areas. It was really causing it to look really choppy, really kind of fuzzy on the edges. So I thought, well, what about a blast shield? Like if there was aliens attacking or there, you know, solar flares or whatever, the base would probably have some sort of way to seal off these areas. Uh, so I called this a blast shield and I took a big concrete pipe, well, a tiny concrete pipe, and I made it really big. And I sort of sunk it just underneath the edge of the glass. And it's on its own layer, so I can turn it on and off. So when I, you know, that way I can see inside the base for, you know, certain shots, you know, top downs and things like that, or when you're inside the base looking out. And I, you know, went through here and used the procedural objects mod to color, color it black. So it's actually black underneath here, but the blue glass over the top of it gives it this sort of mirror shine to it. And here we go. I'm just sort of copying it over and trying to get it in place. Now it does sort of, you know, if it's not perfectly rotated, it does stick through the glass a little bit. So I'm going to go back after I get all these in here and even it all out. Really, in this series, I'm trying not to do choppy camera on you as much as I did in uh, Thundertown, my previous series. And of course I am backing this up as much as I can, um, both in the cloud and, and some local backups occasionally. I have the save folder auto backing up to another folder in a, on another drive every hour or something like that. So now that I got all these in here, I, I go through and I'm just, just doing this little bit of tweaking. So yeah, I, I would definitely like to know, you know, if you guys got a favorite series, you know, cartoon or movie series or something, and you think there's something cool that would work on this base, uh, please, please let me know. Uh, I had a suggestion. There's a 1980s cartoon series, I believe called Ulysses 31. And somebody suggested that the base kind of looked like the ship, the Odyssey that's in there. I thought that was really cool, so I actually watched it. And uh, it's you know the hair in there is like it's a, it's a it's anim it's an animated cartoon, but it, the hair is like right out of the 1980s. So here's where I'm you know copying over, well, starting over again here, but sort of copying over all of these um, things I did for the side, and I'm going to paste them on a big giant scale here right around the base, so the whole base is finished on the exterior. Well, it's not finished, finished. I will be, in future episodes, doing small additions to the exterior, especially if people have ideas of some cool stuff that can go out here. I would like to add some ships and things flying around. So here I'm taking the, the central area that I built, the commands area, and I'm lowering these outer edges to go along with the slope of the round area. And I'm going to extend them out here. And this is what I'm, I'm calling this the communications array. I'm going to be putting some big satellite dishes in here. It's really hard to actually get a hold of this piece to, <laughs> as a procedural object is the little, the little box with the plus is right underneath something else. So here's the uh, satellite dishes. I made them really big and I'm going to color them slightly. So I'm actually putting a slight blue tint to a lot of the things. Um, the exterior especially seems to like really look good with lots of different blues and different shades of blue out here. So 
So here I found, this is the, that seed vault or doomsday vault or whatever you call it. I love that like aqua blue uh, thing. It lights up at night. It's like, it's it stays lit. It's like uh, like a bright blue, you know, light there. So I put this in here and, you know, cut it down to as little of it as possible just to make these little like areas along the top of this. You can see here it's actually getting dark. I forgot to turn off the thing and then you can see them lighting up a little bit. And this is sort of where we're at right now as of the, uh, at this point in time, uh, anything I build from here on out, that's what it's like. And here's the cinematics. So let's uh, just sit back and relax and check it out. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you'll like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And we'll see you again soon. If you like this video, check out these cool videos.